How's it going, everybody? Today, we're going to be looking at the GNU Privacy Guard, or in other words, the GNU PGP tool. PGP is, stands for Pretty Good Privacy, um, and basically, it is a public GNU open source version of a tool that's used for managing encryptions, keys, checksums, and mainly used to sign packages and things of the sort. Um, Basically, how it works is that you can generate a secret or a private key and the public key to it. Say someone has a package or they have a message or a text file that they want to share with you, you'll give them your public key and they can encrypt the message or the package and they can give it to you. And because you have the private or secret key, you can unencrypt or decrypt the message and figure out what it was originally there. This uses the encryptions, and then you can also use checksums, which we covered in one of the previous videos. Um, they basically have an algorithm to show if a file was changed or not. Using a combination of all of these technologies, you're able to create a signature also for a file. Basically, to sign the file, say that it came from you, and that file signature is able to validate if the file came from you based on checksums that are happening in the background using your signature and your public key. This tool should come installed on your computer automatically. Um, if not, um, you can get it on the website if, or you can get it from your package manager. It should be on your computer though. So we can see the man page. Um, we're not going to be covering everything, so if you need to find out more about it, go ahead and jump in the man page. One example is there's ways to generate signatures that will expire after a certain amount of time. We're not going to cover that, but you can learn more about that in the man page. So if you need to generate a key, this will generate your private and your public key. You'll just do gen key. And it's going to ask for your name and your email. So let's go ahead and do that. Just like that. And it just asks if you want to change your name or email or if everything's okay. If you want to cancel, you'll just quit. We'll do O for okay. It's going to ask for a password. I'm using Ubuntu GNOME. So I guess it asks for the passphrase outside the terminal. I'll just put this short one in. It's going to give me an error saying it's too short, but that's okay. Um, there's a chance that it's going to ask you for the password in the terminal instead. But here we can see our key was generated. It has the users that were added to it. And here is the ID of our key. We can go ahead and do list keys as such. And we'll be able to see all the keys, all the public keys that are on our computer. And here's the key that we just generated. Let's go ahead and copy that, um, the ID. It's a little bit lengthy, but that's okay. You can find it pretty easily. You can also look at your secret keys by doing this, and this will list all your secret keys. Now, of course, this isn't the key itself, it's just the ID to the key and it shows the ones you own. So these are the keys that you use to unencrypt and you use these messages, these keys to encrypt. Um, unencrypt as in decrypt. Now that we have a key, let's go ahead and sign something. We don't have a package, but we do have a test file. Um, we'll look at it right now. So this is just the test file. It basically can work on any sort of file, any package, a deb or a tarball or something like that. So we'll just do gbg and we'll detach sign it. And it'll do test because um, that's the name of it. So that's basically all you have to do. It generated the signature. So now if you want to share this, you can go ahead and share the signature as well. And that's a way to validate that it came from you. But when you share this, you also want to be able to share your public key so they can know that the signature belongs to the public key. So you just want to host this on different ways, and this is just different ways of validating it. So let's export our public key. You can not do anything, but we can add in the key's ID like that. And we'll just call it pubkey.asc. And now it should generate it into ASCII. Um, so here's our public key, um, just like that. There's ways to upload keys to servers. I've been having a little bit of issues of uploading it from the command line. Um, we'll do, we'll look at an example. It'll be key server, Ubuntu, MIT, other websites as well have servers. We're we'll looking at the Ubuntu server. Um, you'll do this. It'll it's called keyserver.ubuntu.com. You do sin keys, and let's pass in this. Oh. I passed in. You don't want to pass in that. You want to pass in this right here. 
And it doesn't show any sort of error, but if you were to actually go into Ubuntu's website, paste in the key, do the search key, um, I guess in my case this probably worked because I had it um, uploaded already. But if that doesn't work, just go ahead and copy this public key that you generated. Um, copy is not a command uh, for you guys. Uh, I'll just quickly show this in case someone's interested. This might not work in every system. But you just want to copy and paste what is in your pub key file now. Um, so whatever is in here, you just want to copy it. Go to this website that I can have shared or the MIT website. You go to submit key and oh, let me get it. And you just go to submit it. You submit the key and it says inserted. Um, I guess I was ignored because I already have it inserted. And then you should be able to search it. And as well, now you have your public key. You can email your public key to someone. You can host it on a website, give someone your URL. But now that it's hosted on a key server, they can also go ahead and download it. So let's go ahead and look at this that we had right here. And what they need is just receive key. So if you were to just share this snippet with someone, you don't need to host the key yourself and you can share the key easily with a friend. So we can see unchanged was one because I already have the key. But we can see this is the person who the key belonged to, me of course. And I already have it saved so it doesn't actually modify anything. Say you want to delete a key, um, you would just do delete keys and you can, oh, I had that copied again wrong. Um, but basically you'll just do gpg delete keys and then this one. You can also do delete secret keys like that and that would delete your key. We're not going to run that. That's just something I wanted to quickly mention that you could do. You could also export your secret key as well. Um, it's just like this. Uh, secret keys, we're not going to be exporting it. Usually, I'm just going to say this once, don't ever share your secret or private key with anyone and be careful even when you're transferring it. <clears throat> and say you're able to send a key with someone, they don't need to pull it from a server. You can do an import and we'll just do import the public key and then once again it's going to add it to their public keys. And you can also import a private key once, I guess I'll say it one more time. Uh, you shouldn't be sharing private keys, so I would say this isn't something that you're going to really need to do. Um, and then it'll be the same thing. It'll be import, and then it'll be your private key file, which we don't have. Let's cancel out of that. So now that we have all of this right here, let's actually go, go ahead and check it out. So you do the verify. And we want to verify with a signature. And you'll verify, in this case, it's just a file, but it could be the package, and we'll run it. And now we can say it's a good signature. It says who signed it. Um, there's actually two names on this. And it says when it was signature. Um, let's look at a ways we can add two names. That's possibly because we have multiple keys. But also, if we were to go in, there's an edit mode. Edit keys like this. Um, let's go in. Just copy one of these keys. You can go and edit it. You can list who's in it. You can do help, and you can actually add a UID. You can add a name and a password, uh, a name and an email, and it'll just add it to it. And then what you want to do is just type save after you do that. Um, if you're not going to change anything, you can just quit. Uh, we're not changing anything in this instance. So now that we've done that, this basically is a way to verify that a signature was valid and that the signature has the correct checksum for the package showing that the package wasn't changed or anything like that. Now I'm going to show you one last thing. It's basically a way to create an encryption uh, to encrypt a message to be able to share with someone. So you'll do this. It'll be encrypt. You want to say your recipient. So you have your friend's public key. It's added to you already. I'll just use this in this example. Encrypt and let's just encrypt this file. So now we have this file right here that you can go ahead and share with people. It should be an encrypted file. So we'll go ahead and decrypt it. And assuming that they have the private key, which we do in this case, we'll decrypt it and it's going to say who encrypted it and when it was encrypted and it's going to show what the contents are. So that's a pretty basic way for using encryption and decryption for sharing messages as well. 
So hopefully you found this video useful. It's a great tool for validating and signing packages to make sure that the packages you are getting aren't malicious in any sort of way. Um, it's also a good way for encrypting data for sharing with friends. Um, here's one example on the Fedora website. It's slightly different, but if you go, or go ahead and download the ISO, you can also verify it to this way. You would download a checksum, and then you would also download their public key. Um, it's listed as a public key, but I feel like uh, maybe this key ring works a little bit differently, but I was thinking maybe it was a signature when I had previously looked at it. But basically, instead of actually comparing it against the package itself, you compare it against their checksum. You can also validate the checksum against the ISO um, to make sure that the checksum belongs to the ISO. Um, so that's just one example. A lot of websites or that have packages for you to download will have that. Um, I believe apt or yum, um, all Pac-Man, all those things in the background when they're installing packages from repositories, they're using similar technology, if not the exact same technology. So hopefully you found this video useful, if I haven't already said that. Feel free to check out the previous checksum video if you want to learn more about that, if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and see you guys again next time. Bye.